Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you've never been on my channel before. Basically, I have so many fantastic ideas for videos right now, but I can't do them because either number one, they cost a significant amount of money, which I'm like trying to save right now. So that knocked a lot of ideas off of the list for now. And then also, since I just had my wisdom teeth removed the other day, um, I obviously can only eat so many things. So then that knocks off like all my other video ideas that I wanted to do this month, but I'll do them. I'll do them later. I have so many ideas, like so many ideas. So I was like, what kind of video can I do that's still interesting, that doesn't cost money and also doesn't require me to eat any sp specific foods. So we're doing a kitchen tour, which I've wanted to do for a while, even though it feels kind of awkward to do because I feel like usually when people do a kitchen tour, their kitchen is more like fancy than mine or they got like, I don't know. It's more of like an aspirational like house tour. It's like aspirational. So people are like, oh, it's so nice. Like I want my house to look like that. Well, not that I'm saying it's not nice. I'm just saying like, it's not about that. Anyways, okay, so we're just gonna talk. I don't know what I'm saying. People ask me questions about a lot of the things in the kitchen. So that's what I want to talk about. You know, like what do I use a lot or like any appliances, if you guys want to know about them. If anyone watching this is interested in the decorations, like the wallpaper and the leaves and tile and stuff, tile, I will link my kitchen renovation video where I talk all about that. But something that I didn't talk about about. I don't really show this area very much. We have this whole wall over here that I never show in my videos <laughs> because, well, yeah, there's just not really reason to. A while ago, I did the wall. You know, I put, I hung up a bunch of stuff that I'd been like kind of collecting for a while. Just like every time I went to the thrift store, I would look at the framed items area. You know, what would you call that? Pictures, the frame things, wall art, wall art. I would look at the wall art area and just grab whatever like quirky little grandma-y thing that I was interested in. And then some of the things I don't love as much as others, but I was just trying to like complete the wall, you know? I can always replace those down the line, but I like it how it is. Like the gold frame, I kind of want to paint it a different color, but I don't really know what color to paint it. Anyways, this plant, my brother and sister-in-law got me this macrame hanger. And then it's just a fake plant because I can't have real plants in here. The only light in this whole area the kitchen and living room area is a sliding glass door that's all the way over there it's so far away from this that I think the only plant that I could have in here would have to be like a very low low sunlight plant so if anyone knows the knows of though knows of a plant that is very low sunlight like barely any feel free to let me know so all the plants in here are fake there's only a few but anyways hi Mabel would you like to be here I don't know if I've ever held her in one of my videos, like in the kitchen. I used to do that with Morty when I was at my, Morty or Sissy when I was at my parents' house because they would just be hanging out in the kitchen and they like to be picked up more. <laughs> she doesn't always like to be picked up, so I try not to like force it on her. Anyways, um, like she's already done. This thing, this is like two baskets. I think I got this on Amazon a long time ago. You know, when I got it, I was really happy with it. There's like these little handles that you can flip in and then stack them or you can flip them out. I don't really know if there's another purpose for them. I guess you could hang them or something. Anyways, I got it and I thought I would use it for like produce, but then I just don't really use it. Literally, there's one garlic clove in here right now. Just one garlic clove because I don't really know what to put in it. At first, I think I would put like onions and potatoes in it and stuff, but then I realized that those sprout in the light, so they can't be here. And then I was like, okay, fruits, but I have a banana hanger thing over there. That's like the only fruit that I leave out. You know, I don't really leave things out. I just put them in the fridge because I get scared. So there'll be like one avocado one here at a time and then it'll go in the fridge. It's, some, it's spring gonna be summer now, so maybe I'll buy more produce and put something in there. Anyways, the air fryer, um, it doesn't work. It stopped working. I should probably try it again, just in case, you know, I don't know, it started working again.
This is Avalon Bay brand, if anyone cares. I was sent it years ago. I think it was one of my first, like, I don't even think they paid me. I think they just sent me the air fryer to talk about it in a video. And I was like, that's fine, because I want air fryer anyways. And you know, it served me well for years. Oh, this is my soup that I'm eating. And then this is my blender. A lot of people ask me about my blender and I don't know what edition it is, but I'll link it. It's a Vitamix and I have the 48 ounce pitcher, which I think is a good size for most people. If you're often making like large batches of things or like smoothies or something for like a whole family, then maybe the big one. You can also buy both of them, but they are expensive. Anyways, I think the only time that I wished I had a bigger one was when I was making cheesecake, raw vegan cheesecake. So I was blending all the like cashew and everything together and I was making like a double batch. So it was like not fitting in here and it was it was a bad experience. Also, if I had the bigger thing, it wouldn't even fit under here. I can't even put the lid. This is what really annoys me about this apartment is how low these cupboards go. So like, I can't even put the lid on the Vitamix. It won't fit in there under any, if I put the lid on, it won't fit. It's so annoying. Vitamix, honestly, is it expensive? Yes. Could you probably get another blender that works just as well, but isn't as much? Sure. I already have this. I bought it years and years ago. So I haven't tried any other blenders for such a long time, but it's really nice. It's worth the investment if you do a lot of stuff with it. Let's move over here and look at this cupboard. Speaking of appliances, this is my microwave. It's a Black & Decker. It was the cheapest one at Target when I got it. <laughs> and it sucks ass. It sucks. And I didn't even know that microwaves could like suck that bad because I'd only used like my parents' microwave at their house. But then after I started using this, I was like, oh, like, wow. You could really tell. How, what a difference. I've considered getting a new one so many times. I should probably just try to throw one, right? But then you can like test it before you use it. I don't know. This is just a large wooden bowl that I had that is to cover up the, how the tiles like really messed up back there and I never fixed it. And there's always just random stuff in here. Packaging from tea that I bought, I guess in case I forgot what was in there. <laughs> there's a ruler. Oh, there's a um, magnet that broke. It's so cute, right? So that's just there. And this is the cup that I used to microwave maple water for her food. This cupboard. Okay. This is like, uh, what is this cupboard? Snacks and oatmeal. This looks very organized right now. It's not always like this. I try to do like jarred things here and then bags here because that seems more organized to me. Um, and this is some trail mix. I haven't been like refilling it because I can't eat it. Here's some protein powder that I got from Care Of and I did a video sponsored by them. I don't want to talk too much about it because this video is not sponsored by it, but you know, I do like it. I just forget to use it. It was in the pantry for a while. And so I kept forgetting that I had it, <laughs> which is just how my brain works. Okay. So I recently moved it in here because this is kind of more like breakfast associated area. So I was like, oh, that might make me want to use it more like put it in oats or smoothies or whatever. So it's in there now. I have some date syrup, which is quite good. It's kind of like molasses-y. Coconut sugar that is really clumped. Cacao nibs and chia seeds. This used to be like the seeds area, seeds and nuts, but I put a lot of seeds in the fridge now because I'm scared they're going bad. And I also have this random little pack of agave that comes with the oatmeal from Starbucks that I didn't use and now I'm just saving it for one day when I need it. This is like healthy things. This is like the healthy things area. It's like nuts and seeds and dried fruit, protein powder, date syrup, agave, oatmeal. Another thing that's annoying, the shelves are so small. So like the agave should go in here, right? But it doesn't fit. So it has to go up with all the oatmeal. This is just old fashioned oats, mini oats, and then some oatmeal packets that I bought for a trip. They're so good, but I try not to eat them because then I'll have to buy more and I don't want to make it a habit that I'm just someone who eats oatmeal packets instead of making it myself, but it's so good. Yes. Well, this above the stove area is just oils and vinegars, basically. It's not very interesting. And some mucinex for when I had COVID. I showed this area a lot in previous videos because I was like going through it and stuff. As you can see, I've only made so much progress. <laughs> this is like the condiments and seasonings section. We got some condiments and seasonings, okay. This stuff is so good. Chili garlic sauce by the Sriracha brand. Would recommend. It's great on literally everything. It's not that spicy. It's very easy to like control 
the amount of spice that you add to your food with this, you know? It's really good for noodles, it's really good in ramen, it's really good on pizza even. I've like mixed it with ranch before as like a pizza dipping sauce and that was so good. Um, Like if you like crushed chili flakes on your pizza, you would really like this. Sesame oil, rice vinegar, random things I need to use. I still have not used these things. Once I get my teeth back, I mean once I get my ability to eat whatever I want back, I really want to make these and try them in a video. Seasonings. But these are just my um, more like unique seasonings. Like I only bought them for certain cuisines or something. And then also the little seasonings mixes that I made, which I really like. I would highly recommend, I showed this in a previous video, but as you can see, I have been using them and I really like doing that and I'm gonna make more for sure. Nutritional yeast. Love nutritional yeast, put it on everything. Then this thing, this thing, I've got asked about a lot in videos and it is just a magnet. This whole like area right here is a magnet in the back and then this area right here. So it's like super strong, so nice. I would highly recommend something like this for anyone if you just need more storage space or even if you don't because it's just like ease of access. The brand that I bought it from is kind of pricey, but I just really wanted it. But since then, I've seen that a lot of other companies have started making some similar things. But yeah, there's always random like chip clips on here and stuff, because I don't know where else to put them or I'll lose them. I always have the peeler on here, lemon squeezer, thermometer, a whisk, the kitchen shears. Usually there's a can opener on here. It's very handy. And somebody asked me what brand the kitchen shears are. They are Kun Recon. Kun Recon. 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 And they're very nice. They're actually, I was gifted them and they, I mean not gifted by the company. They were a gift from a, like a person that I know. They were actually advertised as kitchen or garden shears, which I thought was kind of weird. But I mean, also, why not? They're good and they're good. Paper towels, you know, they're recycled paper towels. Also, I don't use paper towels very often. So if anyone, well, if you're gonna judge me, you can just judge me, it's fine. Up here is another seasoning mix, cinnamon, just so it's separated from the rest of the seasoning. And here is some glass pens. Like pens for writing on glass. They're just here to encourage me to write things, like the date on leftovers or whatever, but I still don't do it, so. In here, this is just a place for little utensils. So we have these little spoons. I have like a five pack of these little spoons. Funny story, I actually thought they were long spoons. I did not read the measurements at all. Pictures made it seem like they were a lot bigger. Hey guys, not only did the camera battery die, but it also was stuck in the camera for a long time and I could not get it out. But it's out now, placed, and we're back many days later. But anyways, I believe I was talking about the spoons. This is what I thought they'd be like. I thought they'd be like a cocktail spoon, like cocktail stirrer kind of spoon. But no, they're little baby spoons. But I didn't feel like taking them back. So now they're like seasoning spoons or salt spoons, stuff like that, you know? I should probably measure like what, if it's like a teaspoon or what. It's probably less than a teaspoon, like half a teaspoon, quarter teaspoon. I don't know. But they are kind of perfect for scooping seasonings out, so. I don't fully regret buying them. But anyways, yeah, then I have this spoon. I love long, skinny spoons. I think they're very fun. This one I use to sometimes stir the coffee grounds in the French press or to scoop the coffee grounds out of the French press. Yeah, so it's easy to just scoop your seasonings out. Sometimes when you're seasoning over a hot pot on the stove and there's like steam coming off of it, the steam will go inside of your seasonings through the hole and then you'll have clumped up seasonings. Also probably makes them go bad faster but I don't know about that. Also in this little jar, I have my loose leaf tea thing, clamp, which I used to really love. I loved using this when I had like loose leaf chamomile tea or mint tea for like my sleepy time tea. I don't do that so much anymore, especially like in the summer, it's too hot to drink tea. But um, these are really nice for lower waste if you like to buy loose leaf tea in bulk. If I'm using loose leaf tea, I'm usually making like a larger batch of tea. And so I will make it in the French press, which we will talk about. Oh. But yeah, you just put your your tea leaves in there and put it in. It's great, it's dishwasher safe. Oh, I have a tiny whisk, I forgot about that. Tiny whisk. Here's a cocktail spoon. As I said, I love spoons. And 
you know, I don't know where the other ones are, but I also keep my um, milk frother attachments in there. There's a few of them, but I don't know where the other ones are. I only really use this one. Even this one I don't really use. I'm not the biggest froth milk fan. I mean, I like it, but it's not, I don't care that much about my milk being frothy. Food thermometers are cool. You can get one for super cheap. You could probably get one at a thrift store, but I used to think of food thermometers were kind of like only something that cookity cooks need in the kitchen, you know, like people who are really particular, like, oh, I have to have this to the exact temperature. But now I use it all the time, mostly for hot water temperature, because I don't have like one of those kettles where you can set it to a certain temperature. So I just boil it on the stove and then stick this. There's actually a spout on this um, tea kettle. This is actually Casey, my friend and roommates, um, but we both use it. There's a hole here for the steam, I guess, but it's also perfect for just setting this in to take the temperature of the water. So after I turn it off and I set it aside so there's no longer steam needing to come out, then I set this in here, get it to the right temperature for what I'm making making coffee, tea, whatever. And we will get to that later, hopefully if I don't forget. Being vegan, obviously it doesn't matter as much that you're cooking the meat. Like you don't have to worry as much that you're cooking the meat perfectly for like safety reasons, but obviously just for cooking your food well. Frying, which I don't do very often at all, but the last time I deep fried, which was for my video where I made Korean corn dogs, it went a lot better because I was actually using a food thermometer. So anyways, those are some reasons why a food thermometer would be good for you. Oh yeah, French press. So French press, you know, I particularly cleaned it before the last time I was filming because I was like, oh, I'm going to talk about it. Let me clean it. And then I forgot that it's not clean before I started filming this one. French press. Love it. It's the best. Speaking of lower waste options. For a while, I was like buying coffee, like the bottles of coffee concentrate or cold brew from the store, which obviously every time it comes in a plastic bottle, well, you can get it in a, in a glass bottle, but you know, you have to keep buying it. It's another thing that you have to keep buying and it can be more expensive of doing that. So when I wanted to start making coffee myself on a regular basis, I was like, what do I want to get? Like, I don't really want to get Keurig type thing because then you have to deal with the pods. I know there's reusable pods, but that also just seems like kind of a hassle. And I don't drink hot coffee anyway. Coffee pots, you know, the standard ones, you have to use a um, thing every time, a paper thing. I know you can buy like biodegradable ones or you can buy reusable ones probably too. But anyways, after reading about them and watching videos of them, it seems like the best option. You don't need any kind of filter or anything and all the parts are dishwasher safe and it looks nice. It doesn't take up very much space. You can also make tea with it, any kind of tea. And because I pretty much only drink iced coffee, it's really good for making things in batches because I can just, you know, fill it up with water, put whatever coffee or tea inside. And then I just pour it into like a mason jar, put it in the fridge. And yeah, I mean, I guess you can do that with the coffee pot too. Although this is a nice French press, but I regret not buying the one or ones that have um, a piece that goes under the grounds so that after you're done making the tea or the coffee, you can just li you can lift that out and it lifts all the grounds out so you can just throw them away. I didn't know that existed. And then I got upset when I found out that it existed through a Morgan Drinks Coffee video. So if anyone knows if you can buy that part, I would love that because I would definitely do that. And then I have my coffee grinder that my mom got me. It's a Cuisinart. It works fine, but I also have nothing to compare it to, so I don't even, don't even, don't listen to me. Also this rice cooker I will link below once I figure out what model it is, maybe. But this is also not mine. This is my roommates that we both use, but it's really nice. I really want to do a rice cooker video sometime soon because I literally have only used rice cookers for rice and I know you can do so much more with them. Even this rice cooker, it has like a, I think it has like a cake setting. Yeah, I also want to use it to make like a mixed rice thing, like a mixed grain thing. You know, people do like rice mixes where there's like different kinds of grains in there, like long, long rice, medium rice. Long short grain. <laughs> um, I have a salt cellar that I love to use. I put like Himalayan salt in it because it's like better for like sprinkling on top of stuff. I don't remember where I got this, but I thought it was so funny how it just says salt on it. It's like this marble kind of vibe and then the lid is like wood. So it kind of has this like natural vibe, you know? And then it just says salt in the most bold, aggressive, like aerial font. But it's fading away now. It was just like salt, you know? This thing that I keep all my spoons in is a vase. I think it was my mom. I think it was for my parents' house. Like they didn't want it. 
I'm not sure, but I've had it since I moved out. Also, a little hack. If you want to use something like this for your utensils, but they're not long enough, there's like one or two towels in here underneath that I just like folded up and shoved in here so that the utensils would sit higher, you know? So if I didn't have those towels, then they would be like... Well, they wouldn't all fit because, you know... This, yeah, so... You guys know what I mean, hopefully. Fake plant. Oh, I also have this, and it's not. It's usually in this jar, the the small small utensils jar. It's just a reusable toothpick type thing for baking. So when you need to check the center of a cake or bread or whatever to see if it's done cooking, this is just a reusable one. It's also dishwasher safe if you set it upside down in the utensils thing, because if you set it this way, it will like fall through, you know. But you can just set it upside down. Ever since I moved here, I've never had to toothpicks. I almost said TikTok. Tic Tacs. Oh my god. Also, another thing. I talked a lot about it in a recent in recent videos, but I now have my seasonings in here. I don't know if I gave it like an update about it, but I really like it so far. It's been really useful. I ended up moving them this way, which I'm not sure if I like better. I might move them back the, the other way, like vertically. But yeah, I would recommend doing this. You can just see everything better. I'm also slowly making my collection more like uniform which is kind of fun, but they're never going to be like perfectly uniform, which I like because you see I have like slightly different like lids for them because they're just like random ones that I've collected. And then I also have, I don't want my feet to be in the video. <laughs> oh shit. I also have this thing, um, which is quite useful. A lot of apartments or even houses, you have like a space between the fridge and the cupboard. I think I got this on Amazon. It was really hard for me to find one that fit my space perfectly. I've seen people put a lot of different things in these. Mine is used for uh, baggies, foil, and parchment paper, stuff like that. I also keep these oven mitts in here. And you know, I have a lot of like foil and shit right now because I got overflow from other people, so it looks like crazy, but it's not, I swear it's not me. <laughs> and then it just looks like that. And if it wasn't so overflowing, you wouldn't even notice it. Oh, when I talked about the thermometer thing, when I talked about the food thermometer, I said, we'll get back to that. And I was talking about up here, you can't see it. Well, this is my tea and coffee area up here um or like beverage area i don't know but i have all these post-it notes over here and like should i make it more aesthetic someday maybe but i have like a guide for all the temperatures and durations of brewing for coffee and different kinds of teas because i forget all the time i've literally never actually no i remember what coffee is now but i can never remember what all the teas are so I also have a post-it note that has three teaspoons equals one tablespoon, four tablespoons equals a fourth cup. Because that's also a useful thing to know. Yeah, I have all my straws, reusable straws, in a big mason jar, which is kind of fun. Random stuff that I don't use back there. <laughs> Instant coffee that I also don't really use. Um, I have some liquid stevia. I love liquid stevia. I don't use it that often anymore, but I really like it in tea. Um, for some reason, I don't like it as much in coffee, but in tea, it's good. This is just all the teas and stuff, tea bags all down here, and this is some loose leaf tea. Definitely if you want, like, uh, organization items, like little shelves like this for your cupboards, your drawers, um, or little baskets and stuff, definitely try thrift stores because I always see random stuff like that at thrift stores, but it's like not what I need at the time that I need it, you know what I mean? But yeah, I have a different shelf on the other side and it just has random stuff that I don't use all the time. So it's kind of like in the back. Speaking of thrift stores, I also thrifted this banana hanger <laughs> for like $4 somewhere. Oh yeah, $4, there's still the sticker on it. These are super ripe and I need to freeze them, but it's just kind of cute, I don't know. And you're supposed to keep your bananas away from your other produce because they ripen everything faster. Filmed a video of me organizing the pantry because it got really bad recently. And so now it's more organized. 
but you'll just see that in the pantry video. So I guess that's it. And I don't know, you guys can ask me questions about anything else that you want information on and I'll respond to you, try to respond to you either in the comments or in another video. Thanks so much for watching. Love you guys, appreciate you guys. Stick around for the next video. Hit that subscribe button, click the bell, and follow me on TikTok because I'm trying to post on there now and Instagram. Okay, bye. I know I'm missing things. Like, I just know there's things that I'm missing.